Good day, my friends. You know, one of the things I love in moments of conversation that I have with people is when they remind me of the fact that we can't always control everything. And they remind me of how we make mistakes, of how I make mistakes. If you were to watch my video yesterday, uh, you would find that the words on the uh, screens behind me are actually reversed and one of our folks actually contacted me to point out that I must have gone to a lot of effort because I reversed the entire stage and put the piano where the drums are and the drums where the piano is and the truth is of course I didn't do that but the camera re reversed them and turned the words around backwards and and it's such a great reminder actually when you think about it of the truth that we're actually not in control of what happens in the world are we between the mistakes we make and the reality of the influences that uh, we are subjected to, we cannot control things. Uh, certainly in these days, we know we can't control things. We know that there's challenges and difficulty uh, to be faced at every turn, whether it's things we want to get that we can't get, like going to the grocery store and finding out I'm only allowed to buy two loaves of bread when we usually use a bit more than that, uh, or just the simple fact of not being allowed to go and do whatever I want whenever I want. We've talked about these things quite a bit. But my good news for you today is a reminder that God is in control. Psalm 2 has a wonderful uh, challenge for us as we read through it of understanding that those who think they're in control, even the leaders, even the kings, as it were, the presidents and those who are in charge, are not actually in control. That all their plans, all their uh, orderly uh, diagrams that tell us that this is the way things are supposed to fit together are in fact nothing compared to the sovereignty of God, his power and control. Let me read Psalm 2 for you uh, for a moment today. It says this, Why are the nations so angry? Why do they waste their time with futile plans? The kings of the earth prepare for battle. The rulers plot together against the Lord and against his anointed one. Let us break their chains, they cry, and free ourselves from slavery to God. But the one who rules in heaven laughs. The Lord scoffs at them. Then in anger he rebukes them, terrifying them with his fierce fury. For the Lord declares, I have placed my chosen king on the throne in Jerusalem on my holy mountain. The king proclaims the Lord's decree. The Lord said to me, you are my son. Today I have become your father. Only ask, and I will give you the nations as your inheritance, the whole earth as your possession. You will break them with an iron rod and smash them like clay pots. Now then, you kings, act wisely. Be warned, you rulers of the earth. Serve the Lord with reverent fear and rejoice with trembling. Submit to God's royal son, or he will become angry and you will be destroyed in the midst of of all your activities, for his anger flares up in an instant. But what joy for all who take refuge in him. What an amazing reminder to us all. In fact, the psalmist, as he writes this, wants us to understand that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. That what our leaders need today is great wisdom to know who God is, and to search for his will and how to handle the decisions that they need to make. I want to encourage you that we need to be praying now more than ever for our leaders as they make decisions that affect our lives and the lives of countless others in our country and around the world. We need to be praying for wisdom for them and for protection for them. My friends, whatever your political leanings may be, now we need to pray for our leaders. They are the ones who are going to navigate this uh, ship we call Canada, and, and they together around the world are going to help us to overcome this virus and to defeat it so that we can get back to living our lives. My friends, I hope when we get back to living our lives, we live them in a different way. But all of us, I think, would agree that we want to get back to doing those things we love and to going to those places we love to go and to seeing the people we want to see. I want to suggest that you need to pray for leaders and we also need to be praying continually for wisdom ourselves. James chapter 1 tells us that if anyone lacks wisdom, all we have to do is ask for it. What good news. The Lord loves to give wisdom, loves to give it generously. Just ask him to give you wisdom. And remember, my friends, 
You can ask God for wisdom, and you can be reminded as you do so that God is in control, and you can trust him, that you can leave your way behind and choose his way and know that you'll be on a better path. I love the end of verse 12 here in Psalm chapter two, uh, Psalm 2. It's such a wonderful thing. If you think about Psalm 1 that says, blessed or joyful is the one who seeks the Lord. Psalm 2 ends with a reminder, what joy for all who take refuge in him. My friends, that's where we find joy. Not in solving the situation, not in overcoming it even, but when, finding, when we take refuge in the Lord, we will find joy. I urge you to seek the Lord today. Seek him while he may be found. Put your trust in Jesus. Remember your trust in Jesus if you've already put your trust in him. That nothing can separate you from the love of God. Nothing can separate from you, from, you from, from him. Nothing at all. I encourage you, my friends, find your joy there. And please, by all means, would you encourage others to like these videos to like and to share what we're doing together. You can find links to our services online at hillsboroughbaptist.org and you can find links to our prayer meetings there as well. Join us, come together and search together with us for the joy of the Lord is our strength. Blessings on you, my friends. Have a great day.